Hello and welcome to Poseidon Tech. I'm Theo and together we will explore the amazing world of smart home automation. By watching these videos, you will learn how to control your home equipments such as lights, heating, climatism, cameras, alarm, TV, music and so many others by using your mobile phone. This is episode 1 and we will review KNX. So what is KNX? While explaining KNX, what's a unique project that you can make using this technology? KNX is a worldwide standard for home and building control. In contrast to a standard electric installation, there is no hardwired connection between the control units and the power supply. For example, a light switch is not directly connected with the respective light, instead devices and electric assets are connected via the bus which runs on 29 volts. All bus devices can be programmed with ETS software. A KNX system requires the following components. Power supply for the power of the installation, sensors, push buttons, thermostats, brightness sensors, etc. that generate commands as telegrams. Actuators, switch relay for lights, blinds, etc. that receive the telegrams and perform certain actions. The bus that connects all sensors and actuators. The amazing thing about KNX is because it is an international standard, KNX products made by different manufacturers can be combined. At last, let's speak about bus topology. The smallest entity within a KNX topology is a line. A line can contain a maximum of 64 devices. Up to 15 lines can be combined within one area. Furthermore, it is possible to connect up to 15 areas to a backbone. If you need more information about KNX, you will find plenty useful links in the description section. For my drawings, I used SmartDraw. Now it's time to wire some KNX devices. That's the goal for today's lesson. We will wire these devices in order to control this red light, this green light and this LED stripe from this KNX switch. In order to wire these devices with safety, ask an electrician to help you. This electrical panel is made only for demo purposes and cannot stand alone to an installation without further protections. Keep in mind all the time that electricity can turn you off. Now, let's make some drawings in order to understand the devices and the connections. For our demo we'll need a plug with a cable in order to supply our devices with AC power, line, neutral and earth. One circuit breaker that can break circuit to line and neutral. As you can see, line and neutral from the plug are connected to the bottom of the circuit breaker. One key in X power supply, this is from KBus. Here we will connect line in neutral from circuit breaker and earth from the plug. The KNX power supply will generate the 29 volts that required from the KNX bus. So red and black cables are the KNX bus that will provide to the KNX devices not only the voltage in order to operate but also the path for the telegrams that will carry commands and feedbacks among all KNX devices. One KNX dimming actuator. This dimming actuator is from MDT and I'm using it from this demo due to its small size. Can control up to 4 1 to 10 volts devices such as LED stripes, RGB or RGB white LED stripes and it can be used also as a switch actuator. Of course in a real installation we would use a separate switching actuator and dimming actuator. On top of KNX dimming actuator you will find 4 LA that for example will be used in order to turn on and off lights. So, in channel A of this actuator we will connect line from circuit breaker and the red light. Of course red light in order to operate will need also the neutral from the circuit breaker. Channel B like channel A will follow the same connection in order to control green light. And channel C 
will be used to control the AC power is needed from the 24 volts DC power supply of the LED stripe. Power supply will take the neutral from circuit breaker. On the bottom of the KNX dimming actuator you will find 4 channels 1 to 10 volts. Since we select channel A and channel B as switching on and off, we will not use channel A and B of 1 to 10 volts. Channel C 1 to 10 volts will be able to dim our LED stripe, but in order to make this happen we need an LED controller. This is from Master Electric. On this controller we will connect 24 volts DC from 24 volts DC power supply, the LED stripe and 1 to 10 volts protocol from the KNX dimming actuator. So, with the help of KNX dimming actuator and LED controller we will be able to turn on and off and dim up and down the LED stripe. Don't forget that the KNX dimming actuator must be connected to the KNX bus. One KNX switch. This is from Vimar and is also selected due to its small size. We will use the three out of four buttons. The upper left button will switch on and off the red light. The upper right button will switch on and off the green light and the lower left button with a short press will switch on and off the LED stripe and with long press will dim up and down the LED stripe. The only connection we need for the switch is the red black cable of the KNX bus. Finally, we need one KNX IP interface. This is from Vineshare and it will be used in order to program all the KNX devices. Full review of this product you will find in the next episode. The connections are needed for this KNX IP interface are the red black cable from KNX bus and also an external DC power from minimum 12 to maximum 30 volts. We can take 30 volts from the secondary port of our KNX power supply. We can avoid the external power by using a PoE switch. Now that we finished with all these connections, let's see the real project. That's the DC power supply the KNX power supply, the circuit breaker, the red and green light, the KNX dimming actuator, the KNX switch, the KNX IP interface, the LED controller and the LED stripe. Finally, let's speak about KNX bus cable. This is a bus cable. Let me show you now what is inside that cable. As you can see, there is a red and black cable that are used in all KNX connections and a yellow and white cable that can be used for example in order to supply a KNX device with additional external power. In order to connect the cables to a KNX device we are using KNX connectors. Let's put now this connector to a KNX device. At last, let me show you how to remove cables from the connector without harming it. So, make small circles while trying to remove the cable. In the next episode, we will see how to program our KNX devices in order to control our lights. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful to you, consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the next episode.